here I'm going to show you how to format your chart specifically the X and the Y axis so let's begin by selecting our chart and then over the date at the bottom or whatever data points you have there right click then click format axis now the format axis window will pop up and it usually goes to the patterns tab so let's start there now here in the lines box on the left this is going to allow you to change how the x-axis line looks. So, let's change the style of the line. We'll make it look like this. Let's change its color to red so that it will stand out. And the weight. The weight determines how thick the line will actually be. And if you notice real quick, the box here titled sample, that shows you what it's going to look like. So once I click weight, I'll make it really thick the sample gets thicker. So let's click OK and see what that looks like. There you see the x-axis is now red and has the format that we chose. Now let's go back to format axis. If you want to completely take the axis off, click the radio button next to the word none under lines and you'll see in sample there's nothing. So we'll keep it there just to see what it looks like and move on to the font tab. On the font tab, you determine how you want the text for the x-axis to look. You can change the font of it, or the style if you want it regular, italics, or bold, or the size, or you can change all of them. So let's just make the font different, and keep it at medium font style. And let's make the size a little bit smaller, make it a 10 instead of 11.5. Other things you can do to the font, you can give it an underline, you can give it a single underline, or a double underline like that, or none at all. Also you can change the color to whatever color you, you would like. We'll make ours blue for now. And then you can give it a strike through, or you can make it superscript text, or subscript text. So we'll keep it like this for now, oops, click OK. And there you see, the text is blue, and the font is smaller, and also it's a different font altogether. In addition, we have no x-axis, because we clicked none on the patterns tab. Now let's go back to the format axis window. Let's go to the patterns tab. And let's get the regular black line that was there before. So do that by clicking automatic. Now let's move on to the number tab. The number tab allows you to determine exactly how you want the x-axis data formatted. So do we want it formatted general or as a number, currency, accounting, etc, etc. Now the difference between all of these is, for example, if we select a number, the text or the data should be a number. And what this allows you to do is, first of all, add decimal places here. You can give it none or you can add as many as you would like. Also, you can use a 1000 separator, and what that means is every three zeros will have a comma. So instead of 39488, it'll have 39,488. That just helps you to read numbers a little bit better. If you click currency, what you can do is click the drop down menu for symbol and select dollar sign. Now everything formatted as a currency will have dollar sign in front of it. So instead of the number 39488, which shows up under my sample, you'll have 39,488 with a dollar sign in front of it. So that helps in uh, formatting. But since it's just uh, x-axis data here and it's our date, we're going to leave it at the date. It doesn't need too much special formatting. But one thing you can do is select a subtype. So you can have the date formatted in all these different ways. So for instance, let's take the year out of our x-axis date. We already know it's 2008. So we'll click OK. And you notice now it just says 26, 27, 28, 29, 210. There's no 2008. So let's right click format axis again. Select the original date again. And there we go, 2008 is back. So the last thing before scale that I'm going to show you is the alignment tab. 
On the alignment tab, it allows you to choose how you want your data to be. If you want it to be horizontal, or you want it to be angled up and to the right, or down to the right, or up 45 degrees and down 45 degrees, it allows you to do that here. So let's angle ours down 45 degrees. Click OK. Now you see the dates are angled down. There's not that much space in our chart area though, so let's make it a little bigger. Now you can see all of the dates. So you can make it however however you'd like to have it look here in terms of having it pointing down or pointing up or horizontal. It's pretty straightforward. So now the last thing we're going to talk about is the scale tab. The scale tab allows you to choose how much uh, space you want in between the data points or how many data points you actually want. Since we're talking about dates here, it's not such a big deal. But let's start off with minimum here. The minimum here is 2-6-2008, and that's the first date that we have on the axis. If we made it 2-5-2008, we would have some extra space where there would be no data on the chart, although sometimes it makes it more visually appealing to do that, to add more space on the edges of the chart. Also for the maximum, it's 2-10-2008. If we made that 2-11-2008, it would add another date to the right of that with no data points because we have no data points for 2-11-2008. So this allows you to choose how you want that formatted. Also the base unit, here it's just in days, but we could do it in months or years but that's because it's a date formula. So you'll see in a second why I say that. The major unit and minor unit are one and one. When you use actual numbers such as on the y-axis this will be a little bit different. But what's important to note here, especially when you're graphing dates, is that sometimes the dates will graph left to right and you want them right to left. So sometimes you want 2, 6, 2008 on the right side of the graph instead of the left side. The way that you do that is to go down here and click dates in reverse order. Now one thing to note is if you only select dates in reverse order, the y-axis will move on the right side. It'll simply flip your chart. The way to keep the y-axis on the left side so that your chart looks just like it does now but with the dates in reverse order is to also select value y-axis crosses at maximum value. So now that we've selected both of those, click OK and you'll see that 2-6-2008 is on the right side and 2 10 2008 on the left side. So that's exactly how you can format everything with the x-axis. Now the y-axis is pretty much the same as the x-axis. The only difference I'll show you is how the scale tab is going to look. So I'll right click on any one of these numbers, format axis. Now we're formatting the y-axis. You notice for the y-axis now it's values and not dates. So the minimum is zero maximum 15 and the major unit is 5 what that means is it goes 0, 5, 10, 15 if we made this 1 it would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 so that's what you can do and also you'll notice that if you want to reverse the scale, have the 15 at the bottom and the 0 at top, you do it just like you did with the x-axis, values in reverse order, and if you want the x-axis to still remain at the bottom of the chart, you have to click category x-axis crosses at maximum value. So if we click OK, it's going to look like that. Now that's just about everything on how you can format the x and the y-axis. So there you go.